Everyone keeps saying the same thing. Data analyst jobs are dead. AI is replacing data analysts. And why even bother learning this anymore? But guess what? That's not what's actually happening. What's really happening is that bad data analysts are being replaced and the good ones are becoming more valuable than ever. And today I'm gonna be breaking down exactly where the data analytics opportunities are growing, the skills that actually matter and answer the big question. Should you even bother learning data analytics in 2026? If you're new here, I'm Jess, a senior data analyst. And I went from making 725 an hour to 150 $53,000 as a senior data analyst in tech. Just in the last year, I've helped thousands of people break into data analytics and even land six-figure data analyst jobs. So if you're ready to cut through all the BS online and learn what skills actually matter in 2026, Let's dive in. Okay, here's what's actually happening with AI and data scientists and data analysts in the workforce. Everybody already knows that data analysts are using AI to work more quickly and provide more accurate and faster results, which is why a lot of people think that AI is gonna replace data analysts, but people don't realize that the coding and the numbers are actually the easiest part of a data analyst job. And that's the part that AI is really good at. The hardest parts of a data analyst job are things that AI can't easily replace. And I'm gonna share an actual example from my workplace. So at work, we decided to do an A-B test or an experiment to test out a new onboarding workflow for new customers. We had a software that automated almost the entire process. It automatically and randomly split up users, it tagged them, it kept them separate from each other. It showed one group, part A, and one group, part B, and then it even compiled together all the numbers and statistics at the very end to show us the impact on part B versus part A. So theoretically, we had statistical results comparing the treatment group to the control group so we could easily make a decision on which one to keep long-term. But the problem is that the results came back inconclusive, which means that statistically there was no clear direction of whether we should stick with the control or actually implement the treatment. So the numbers, the AI, the statistics, the automations literally could not make the decision for us. And we actually had to have a big meeting with all the stakeholders and talk through all the business decisions. And these are literally the types of things that AI can't replace. It can calculate all the numbers, do all the code and even automate things, but actually addressing trade-offs and weighing big, heavy, costly business decisions is not something that AI can do. Which which is why companies still need data analysts and data scientists who understand the experiments and the data and the numbers deeply to help guide those decisions. So if you've been worried that AI is gonna replace us, don't be. It will replace the more easier entry-level stuff, but I'm gonna walk you through the three biggest shifts happening right now and where you can capitalize on. Number one is AI-driven analytics. I know, AI, 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 AI. We're hearing AI everywhere and there's a reason for it. It's super important. It's literally speeding up and automating all of the tedious and slow parts of our job. Back in my day, I used to have to write SQL queries completely from scratch every single time, unless I was lucky enough to find a sample query on Stack Overflow or from my own GitHub profile. But nowadays I can use AI and be like, hey, help me write a query that does blah, blah, blah. And then I instantly have sample code I can use as a template and customize for what I need to do. We're also seeing a lot of data analytics tools and BI tools automatically integrate AI into those tools, which is speeding up the process of coding and data visualization and extracting insights from large data sets. So if you're not not implementing AI, you're quite literally going to be left behind. People tell me that all the time in my social media and they're like, Jess, I'm scared to use AI. I'm not giving it all my information. I don't want to use AI. My advice is good luck then because you're not going to be as valuable as analysts who are using AI. Sorry, that's the truth. So if you want to know exactly how to climb the data analytics career ladder in this economy, grab my three-step data analytics roadmap below. It's completely free and it'll show you what skills companies are actually hiring for in 2026. The second big trend is analytics engineering. Using AI in your current workflow isn't enough. We actually have to expand our workflows as data analysts because the dashboard data analyst is dead. If you thought you were going to build an entire career of just building dashboards the rest of your life, you have mistaken because companies now don't just want people who can build dashboards. AI can speed that up and even automate and build entire dashboards on its own. Companies want to actually hire full stack data analysts now who can manage the entire data lifecycle from end to end. That means raw data to cleaning and transformation, developing business logic and metrics to visualization to storytelling, all the way from point A to point Z. And that's why analytics engineering is growing so much right now because companies want to hire people who can not just build visualizations, but also support the pipelines, the business logic, and the metrics that go into the dashboard. 
dashboards and visualizations. So you better work on those technical skills and learn how to ETL. And the third big trend that you should care about is agentic AI, which overall in the grand scheme of things is a very new trend. And even though it's impossible to know exactly where it's gonna go in 2026, it's been moving so fast already throughout 2025. So it's something we need to prepare for as data analysts. Because agentic AI is gonna create so many new roles for data analysts because we have to be the ones to help support all of these initiatives. Because what a lot of people don't realize yet is that AI agents are completely changing the way that we work with data. And for those living under a rock who might not know what an AI agent is, an AI agent is an autonomous system that can actually interact with data, make decisions, and take action all on their own. So instead of AI being a chatbot where you just ask questions and get an answer, an AI agent is something that can actually go out and do things and take action for you. It's like having an additional coworker. You know the old saying, garbage in, garbage out? Well, the same thing applies to AI agents. If your data is stale or slow, your agent is gonna make outdated and bad and slow decisions. So as data analysts, we need to care a lot about different platforms that can support faster querying of fresh data. Okay, really quick, I have to show you one of the coolest database products I've experimented with recently, and it's Tiger Data, which is the sponsor of today's video. And you should actually care about this if you wanna keep up with all the agentic AI trends. If you're working with AI, whether you're a data analyst, data scientist, or just playing around with AI agents, you've probably noticed that data infrastructure has not caught up yet. AI agents really need two things. Number one is the freshest data possible so AI agents actually have the right context to make decisions and take action. Two is a safe environment to explore, iterate, and learn from real data, but traditional Postgres wasn't really built for that. Introducing Agentic Postgres. Tiger Data took Postgres and made it agentic ready. Check it out with the link below. It's still the same Postgres we all know and love, but now it's built for AI and experimentation instead of rigid production only workflows. Tiger Data's big idea is simple. What if you could fork a database the same way that you fork code and let AI agents experiment without ever touching production? This fork has the exact same data and schema, but it's isolated as a safe playground. I can grant permissions and let AI agents run queries, explore patterns, test ideas, and even mess things up. Because if something goes wrong, I can just delete the fork and everything's fine. But if everything goes well, I can keep it. And that's a completely different workflow than traditional databases. Tiger Data also has built-in REST APIs, a CLI, and an MCP server, which means that AI agents can actually interact with the data sources directly from your tech stack. It works really well with tools like Claude, Cursor, and other AI coding tools, which is great for agents having full visibility and context into all of your data and tools so they can make the most informed decisions possible. Perhaps my favorite part about Tiger Data is that it's completely free and anybody can get started today without even putting in a credit card. Check it out with the link below and let's get back to business. Okay, we've covered a lot so far. We've talked about the parts of data analytics that AI cannot replace. We've talked about the three biggest areas of opportunity for data analytics in 2026. And now I'm gonna talk about what you can do today and where you should focus your time and skills. Number one is leveraging AI into all of your daily workflows. And if you're not already doing this, <laughs> What are you doing? There's no better time to start than today. So download all of your AI apps, put them on your cute little phone and make sure you start using them in your daily workflow at work. Use them to ask questions, get information, write code faster everything. Number two is that you need to shift your focus away from being a dashboard analyst into a full stack data analyst. That means stop spending so much time building dashboards and visualizations and learning how to do that, the things that AI can actually kind of automate, and shift your focus into doing more technical skills. So building pipelines, ETL, supporting agentic AI, because those are the most valuable skills right now and those are the things that are going to matter more long term and be harder to replace with AI. And finally, number three is going to be a mindset shift to focus more on business business skills. Because as I shared at the very beginning of the video, AI is really good at calculating numbers and crunching data, but what it's not good at is evaluating business trade-offs and making costly business decisions. So get really good at not only the technical skills, but also the soft skills. So understanding business impact, communicating cross-functionally with different stakeholder teams, and storytelling the results of your data. Because those are the things that actually move the needle in business and are really, really hard to replace with AI. And that's what's going to make you the most valuable. And a little bit of motivation for you, one of my students is really good at a very popular business intelligence tool. This student is really good at building dashboards and visualizing data, but they recently took my SQL courses and really upskilled in the technical side of things and just got promoted. Because companies are no longer paying the big bucks for people to build pretty little dashboards. They're paying data analysts now to build pipelines, do ETL, and dip their toes into analytics engineering and agentic AI. So if you wanna check out my SQL courses, check them out below. In 2026, if you combine technical skills with business thinking, 
you're golden. Watch this video to learn exactly how much money you're losing every year by not jumping into data analytics. And for those of you who are ready to take a baby step into data analytics today, right now, grab my free three-step data analytics roadmap below. It shows you exactly what to learn and how to position yourself for a six-figure data analyst job. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.